All right, so in this video, I wanted to talk about stadiums that were ahead of their time, basically looking at stadiums that did something that was innovative, that was new, that we hadn't seen before, and kind of seeing how that turned out, what is the effect that it had. I've got like six or seven stadiums here, some modern, some going all the way back to the 60s, and we will begin with the Astrodome. So the Astrodome is like the one, I would say, pre-modern super stadium, or at least the attempt at a pre-modern super stadium. Super unique. They had an actual modern roof installed into it, it was totally natural light, it was see-through, which enabled them to have a natural grass infield. Unfortunately, because of the way the sun reflected, they had to blur out some of the tiles in the roof, which killed the grass. So, just such a unique thing going all the way back in the late 60s to have a closed stadium that had natural grass. It had to have been so cool for the players, it didn't last. Again, it died because they had to like uh, paint over some of the clear see-through tiles. Actually looking at the Astrodome before the tiles were painted, it kind of looks like a modern roof you would see at SoFi. I mean, it's not perfect, but for the time period, it was just revolutionary. So the Astrodome, known as the eighth wonder of the world at the time, you know, the interior of it, it looks like your typical run-of-the-mill multi-purpose. It's got the ring, the dreaded ring of death upper deck where it goes all the, way, all the way around the stadium. That's just the time period. It is what it is. Funny thing about the Astrodome, it still technically is alive, but I would say it's on life support. The entire interior of it has been hollowed out, and they're basically just waiting to demolish it. There was a recent thought that maybe they would turn it into, into a parking garage. You can actually see it from NRG Stadium, the home of the Houston Texans, and it just looks like a total dump. So they really do need to put it out of its misery at this point. But at one you know, time, this was the real modern technology of stadiums, especially with its roof. It was so far ahead of its time, going with the natural light look, Unfortunately, due to complications with players not being able to see the ball in the outfield, not being able to track it, they had to blur out and paint over some of the tiles, which ends up killing the grass, and you've got to go with the dreaded AstroTurf, which causes injuries, which is just, you should never be playing on AstroTurf if you're at the major league level, and we realized that, and that's why every MLB field now is not AstroTurf. The last one, I want to say, it was either Tropicana Field or Rogers Center. Rogers Center had really bouncy turf. I don't even know how that was allowed it was like a it, like a trampoline it was crazy but yeah the Astrodome is definitely number one on my list number two it has to be the Civic Center this was the first ever retractable roof I guess stadium slash arena because it hosted different events uh, it was the NHL arena for the Pittsburgh Penguins. You can kind of see the design of it, how, you know, you've got little panels on the side that all kind of collapse together. So it definitely needs to be on the list. And it did get demolished back in 2011. <laughs> the fact that it's an NHL arena, the first retractable stadium or arena. Next, it is Arrowhead Stadium, built in the early 70s. The reason it's on the list of stadiums built before their time it's the upper deck design, and really no one copied this design, but it's just the idea of doing something different that really makes you stand out. I think if Arrowhead would have just done a regular crappy big bowl upper deck, this stadium would have been demolished by now. I really believe that, but the fact that it's so unique, it's become an iconic stadium just because of the unique upper deck design and that is something that I think is really cool. And it would be, you know, we need to see something like that in the future. You see all these super stadiums going up. They're all nice, but they all roughly have the same interior. Let's actually do something innovative and unique and actually use the technology that we currently have to create interesting seating designs that really make a stadium iconic 
Arrowhead did that all the way back in the 70s. And this is the one reason this stadium is still here, in my opinion. Otherwise, if it, if Arrowhead was just two giant walls of seats, this thing would have been demolished in 2004. And take a look at that. So this is an early rendering of what a potential rolling retractable roof would have looked like. Basically, Kauffman Stadium and Arrowhead would share the exact same retractable roof. It would just roll over whichever one needed it. You can kind of see how it would work it's very similar to Safeco Field, which is now T-Mobile Park. It's an open stadium, so it's it's the air is free. It flows throughout the stadium, but you do have the covering over top. They ended up not going with it, and I do think it was the right call. You know, you're talking about Kansas City. They're not getting terrible weather or anything like that. That just kind of seems unnecessary, but Arrowhead Stadium, due to the unique design, is a stadium that's on this list. Next, it is the first super stadium, in my opinion, of the NFL. It's AT&T Stadium. If you guys don't know what a super stadium is, uh, I classify it as like a stadium that's designed kind of as a futuristic looking spaceship type model that's either a retractable roof or a totally enclosed stadium that lets natural light in. That's my definition of a super stadium and it has to cost at least a billion. Well, really, that's not even a criteria anymore because every stadium costs at least a billion dollars. But still, this was the first super stadium. You can see the design of it. You've got a lot of you know, natural light coming in. You do have the idea of the retractable roof, although it barely ever is open. And then you have that window design. But with AT&T, it was just the combination of everything. It's the Cowboys. This thing went up in 2008. It really was the first super stadium. The outside of it does resemble a spaceship. And you kind of have the water in front. SoFi Stadium's done that with a waterfall. They've kind of mimicked it. And then all the super stadiums going up in like 2015, 2016, Minnesota, Atlanta, Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, and SoFi, they have at least used a similar model with the one window behind the end zone, you know, that lets in a ton of natural light, and then you do have kind of either a retractable roof or like a see-through ceiling, so AT&T Stadium really paved the way for super stadiums in the NFL. And then kind of at maybe a scaled down model, if you're talking about you're not in like a huge market like Dallas, Indianapolis and Lucas Oil did an amazing job with their stadium. The exterior bricking is awesome. The interior, they actually have a better window than I would say any team in the NFL. I love the design of it. It looks so nice. It almost looks like a cathedral type window. And when that thing is open and the roof is open, Lucas Oil is beautiful. So Lucas Oil is another one opening right around the same time as AT&T. Maybe as like a scaled down model version of it. If you're not in a huge market and you can't spend two and a half or three billion dollars, do something like the Indianapolis Colts did with Lucas Oil. This one is Oriole Park at Camden Yards. So this was really an innovator in terms of the stadium boom of the MLB in the 90s because you had Oriole Park going up, opening in 92. Just look at Progressive Field opening in 94, Safeco Field opening in the, in the late 90s, Coors Field. They all mimicked the design to where you've got either a right field upper deck or a left field upper deck, and then the other side of the stadium is open. It's the exact same design, and especially with Oriole Park at Camden Yards really utilizing the you know natural location of it with the warehouse, beautiful design, Utah Street as well. It is a great stadium, but they were kind of like the first ones to bring in this modern design, and I think the same architects designed Coors Field, Progressive Field, and Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Next, it is Marlins Park. So, you know, Marlins Park is a tough one, but what they tried to do with Marlins Park was really cool. You have the futuristic exterior kind of silver white that signifies future. That signifies the future. That's a sweet look. You've got the giant window that really you don't see in MLB stadiums, retractable or not retractable, out beyond left field. They originally had the fish tank behind home plate. It's so sad 
that they ended up getting rid of that. That was another like crazy futuristic thing. You have a fish tank right behind home plate. That's awesome. But yeah, I mean, I like Marlins Park. And then their suites as well. I, I did a video on it. And looking at their suites, they kind of look like this weird futuristic thing. It's just, you can tell Marlins Park was going with a futuristic vibe. I will say the one thing Marlins Park got right I believe it's the first MLB stadium built with a capacity under 40,000 in forever because there are stadiums that based on restrictions are under 40k but this stadium has like a capacity of 37,000 very very small upper deck it is the newer model you hear about Las Vegas stadium being built the capacity is nothing it's like 30k this is the newer model so it is an innovation in that sense for Marlins Park, and I do like the exterior design. They've also got a pool, you know, also Chase Field has that as well, so, but I do like its overall design, and I just, I think they definitely tried to go futuristic with it. Was it a swing and a miss? I, I don't know. Marlins Park is really hard to judge because it never, uh, you know, has much of an atmosphere outside of, like, the World Baseball Classic games, but guys, those are just some stadiums built before their time. The number one stadium, I would say, is probably the Astrodome, just because of the design of it, the whole idea of the eighth wonder of the world, and kind of like the roof that we're seeing today with that look that lets in natural light. Unfortunately, the technology really didn't allow that back in the 60s, so they had to close it. But either way, guys, those are just some cool stadiums that really paved the way for the stadium design we see today. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.